Good morning and welcome back to AskEma.com. Um, with yours truly, Ema Giacoli. I have a YouTube and a blog uh, all about real estate, answering all of your questions, clearing the smoky mirrors, and bringing you transparency and uh, honest and ethical advice. So today, we're going to start our seller series. For those people who are selling a home and are not sure who to call in terms of broker representation, I'm just going to share with you a few things that you need to keep in the forefront of your mind. One, it is a business relationship. So whoever you call to the table not only has to have social proof and things that they've sold because most of the people you'll be calling probably work for some big company and they have tons of social proof. What you want is their personality type. Is it a match for you? Can you work with them? Because selling a house is not something that happens in a day, two days, three days. It can take three months and in a slow market, maybe six. Sometimes even longer, depending on where you're located, right? So homes upstate, sometimes they're on the market even a year. Even downstate, sometimes in parts of um, the city when things are overpriced, you can shoot a six month listing in the foot and end up uh, thinking you need to switch brokers, but you don't. So what I want you to remember is that you should interview three people, minimum. Uh, find one that you feel that you're aligned with, one that has your interests at heart, of course, and one that's going to be uh, ethical and transparent with the public. Two, you want to make sure that you take notes during this process because remember, you're the interviewer. They're coming for a job that, they, that you need to fill and they have to show you their skills their ability to close, their ability to identify a buyer, their ability to screen a buyer who is using financing to make sure that that buyer is going to close and not waste time. They need to have all of those ducks in order. Um, yes, they need to show you the marketing. So they'll need to show you their exclusive listing agreement and you'll need to make a decision of how long you want to be in this relationship with this person. My suggestion is always no less than six months. I mean, sometimes I'll take stuff for four months, but really it's sort of like a waste of time, especially in changing and shifting markets. Six months is a nice, healthy, long relationship. It allows for the house to be properly marketed. Uh, it gives its fair time on the market. It gives fair time to the agent to do what they're supposed to do in terms of exposing, exposing it. And make sure you're not overpaying. Some people say it's industry standard at 6%. There really is no industry standard. That is industry standard, okay? Industry standard, 6%, because people want 6%. It's a lot of money. So, um, you know, just remember, everything is negotiable. So in some markets, they say 6 because we're mandated to co-broke. So we want to do 3 and 3 on a split with another broker. So for the sellers, it's like you're putting out an ad for a job. The person has to come well qualified. You have to get along. They have to be part of your team. They're not on the other side of the fence. They're on your side of the fence. They're trying to help you sell your home. You're not trying to help them sell their home. So remember, keeping these things in mind are very critical. It is an interview. You are in the driver's seat. The homeowner is in the driver's seat, not the real estate professional sitting in front of you. They're there to answer all of your questions. They're there to uh, give you a rundown of their resume and ask for references. You want to speak to people. You don't want to just see social proof. They may have listed a ton of homes and out of the homes, maybe only a handful uh, felt they did a great job. You want to contact some of the people. Look at their lists of closed sales on their real estate web pages that they love to boast about and pick five or six and go ring the bell if you want to. I mean, you're looking at 6% commission, okay? <clears throat> and you're selling a home that's... I don't know, $2 million or $3 million, especially in Brooklyn or even out in Long Island. The agent has to work for that. Yeah, the money doesn't just fall from a tree. How often can you go on a job interview and make $150,000 in one shot to sell? To, I mean, there is very, not, not so common, right? So let's just put things into perspective. One, they have to earn it. Two, you better make sure that that listing agent knows that for every showing, they need to be present. I show up for every showing. I don't just send buyers off to meet the owners of the properties themselves and say, hey, you can handle this, you know, I can't be there, unless it's like an extreme circumstance. But because I look at so much real estate myself, so many times, 
um, the listing agents are never there. Well, how am I supposed to know things about the property that I want to know about it if you're the listing agent and you're not showing up? So if they're doing it to me, they're doing it to everyone else. And they're doing it to everyone else because they put lock boxes on everything and think it's okay to just like, eh, it's like a do-it-yourself, I don't know. It's worse than a fast food restaurant. They don't, as far as I'm concerned, they're not earning their 3%, let alone 6%. So remember, a commission is negotiable. Take notes, ask for references, interview a minimum of three agents, make sure you get one that you like, someone that you can work with because it's not a short-term thing, nothing happens overnight. And you wanna make sure that your property is well uh, um, exposed and taken care of in the long run. Um, again, some of the things they need to know how to, how to scrub and screen buyers. Okay. I can usually tell right away when the buyer enters the door that that's the buyer for the property and whether it takes me two weeks, uh, or, uh, two months. Um, and when the buyer has not arrived yet, I just know it. So even if I have multiple interests in a property, I just know who the buyer is going to be. I use my instinct. And when you're doing this long enough, you should be able to know that as well in terms of who is the buyer for the property. So keep in mind, we want to make sure that we understand fully that we are hiring someone to sell our house. So they are filling a job. They are coming to the table with a resume and with references. And you're going to do your diligence because honestly, there's really no fire behind you. You waited this long to make the decision to sell your home and now you're in a rush to find a real estate agent. There's thousands of real estate agents everywhere. Choose wisely and make sure you dot your I's and cross your T's. Read the contract carefully. Make sure you know what you're in into. Make sure someone is telling you honestly and ethically and not like, we're the best, we're the best, and we're the best. Every single firm loses listings. Every single firm has expired listings. There is no one above the law there. So don't get fooled by all the hocus pocus, okay? I'm talking directly to you, the seller, and make sure that they're working for you. And when you sign an exclusive agreement, just make sure you read it carefully. <clears throat> I know a lot of you still think that you want to list for 3%, save money, or give agency exclusives, which is um, you don't want them on the MLS and you don't want them to co-broke. Well, why would you do that? Why would you not want your property exposed as much as possible? Why would you not want your real estate agent to invite other agents in that are representing buyers? Buyers today are using representation. It is a big purchase. I mean, just like stockbrokers and doctors and use referrals and references and you go, you know, get yourself some proper, you know, investment advice. People are using realtors to more and more every single day to help them purchase a home and um, help them uh, navigate the buying process. And if you, the seller, decides, oh, well, I'm only paying 1%, which is a joke, 2% or 3%, you're definitely not going to get the real estate people to work in your best interest. I hate to tell you, even though you sign an exclusive agreement, they're just not going to hustle the listing. You have to just do the math. It takes thousands of dollars to advertise a property, thousands of dollars, sometimes even tens of thousands of dollars, depending on how long it takes to sell and what market you're in. So the real estate professional needs a decent amount of commission to co-broke. So anywhere from four and up is a decent number. If you're talking about 3%, the home better be a $5 million plus house. Otherwise, it makes it very difficult. Remember, there's a real estate professional that comes to you for the interview. There's her bro there, his or her broker. And on the other side of the transaction, if the buyer has representation, there's the buyer's representation plus the buyer's representation's broker. So four people. So those commissions get split four ways. So I want to make that clear to the seller. That all comes down to who's going to see your house. How small of a pond do you want to fish in? Wouldn't you rather cast a line into the ocean? and have your choice of buyers rather than in a pond. So look at commission that way. I mean, if you're only throwing in little worms, you're never gonna catch a shark, right? So you wanna make sure that what you put out is going to come back and it's gonna come back tenfold, right? So you offer a decent commission that can be split 50-50 with cooperating firms and you go on that MLS and you go out there and you make sure you're fully exposed. Forget about one, one, online source. Street Easy is not the end all do all to real estate. Neither is realtor.com, neither is uh, newyorktimes.com. It is a collaborative effort of every single resource out there. 
tons of people live in our country. They are searching all different avenues to find your home. You make sure you're on all those avenues. Alone, you're not going to be able to do it. And we're going to talk to for sale by owners tomorrow because I think for sale by owners need a reality check. There's um, a lot of things that you're thinking in the wrong way. It's like penny wise, pound foolish, and you really don't need to do that. And why would you want to waste your weekends um, showcasing your own home that you're emotionally attached to? And don't tell me that you're not because you certainly are. And so we will talk to Fizbo's another time. But today, for just the average seller who's looking to recruit or hire a real estate professional, again, stay local. Stay committed to someone that's going to do the job. And if you have a relative in the business, allow them to refer you out to someone else so that they can make a commission. It's called a referral-based business. They can make, they, you could just easily say, hey, listen, cousin Joey, I rather work with a stranger. I don't want to get mixed feelings involved in the family, but I'll let you refer me out to someone else. This way he can collect or she can collect a 25% referral fee or 30, whatever they work out. There's no reason for Cousin Joey to feel left out um, and not included. This business is, that's how it runs, and we'll talk about that more on another note. But just remember, you can have your relatives and your friends refer you out to someone else. So there's no hard feelings. Everyone's making money. The only time you can, you'll can you run into a situation when you have hard feelings is when you choose not to acknowledge the fact that someone in your family has this knowledge and knows what they're talking about, and you choose to step over them. So allow them to refer you out. That's number one. Number two, um, uh, keep your notes tight, you know, interview, just like as if uh, you were on a job interview. You're doing the same thing, but in reverse, you're the one in charge. You're the jefe, you're the chief of that interview process, not the real estate person. And make sure they give you refer references to call so that you can um, double check and cross check their work or go look yourself. Um, you know, you, you know, it, it is a home. It's a big deal, whether it's a half a million dollars or five million dollars, it's still your home. And there's pride of home ownership involved there. And you want to be treated with the respect that you deserve. And so giving away the commission and the money is just part of the process. Um, it takes money to make money. And just remember, you want to be exposed for whatever you're putting out. So, uh, again, keep a listing, uh, no less than six months. I would say extend with the same agent. There's no need to change agents unless the agent is not communicating with you. You must get weekly or bi-weekly updates or a monthly update, something. There has to be communication at all times. Where's the market? Where are the market trends? What's changing? How many people at the open house? You should have immediate reports of all of that stuff as you're going through the process. I mean, if you if you didn't go to work every day or punch the clock or check in with your boss or your manager or your team leader or project manager, I mean, how do things get done, right? So look at real estate the same exact way. They have to show up. They have to report to you what they're finding. They need to keep you informed all the way, and they need to show. They need to show that property themselves, not just the lockbox code, not sending your buyers to you directly. Why would you want to pay a commission if you're the one showing your home? Answers, questions? Yeah, thought so. Not not a wise idea. So anyway, so for, for all those sellers out there, please, if you need any information, contact me. My number um, is on the internet, Tyler Vincent Real Estate in Carroll Gardens. You can Google it. It will definitely come up. My number is there. My email is there. Uh, my AskEma.com blog and my Ask Ema Giacoli uh, YouTube channel. Love to coach you through a selling process, help you pick the right agent for you. And... Um, and put you on the right track to get you sold so that you have a positive experience the whole way from beginning to end. Take care. Stay dry. It is a weird weather day today in New York City. Um, so stay safe and until tomorrow. Bye.